Good morning and welcome to our missions message and welcome to Optic Missions Church. You've heard me say in the past that love and grace are twins. Grace and love are twins. Now there's a strange gospel going around, especially with popular TV preachers that saved by grace, all good, have fun life, etc, etc, etc. Well, I do believe we are saved by the grace blood of Jesus on the cross, that he died in and on our behalf. Fair enough, salvation. Then we become born again Christians. But that doesn't mean that we become irresponsible Christians and that we continue in a bad way. Uh, surely we have to refer to the, the gospel as good news. Yes, saved by grace, secure, eternal security. Amen to that. But once we born again, with that new born again status comes responsibility. We become family of God. We become royalty. But with royalty comes responsibility. With royalty comes responsibility. Doesn't the word say? Jesus echoed the Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6, 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and soul, and you shall love your neighbor like yourself. The greatest commandment. Doesn't Jesus say in John 13, you will be known by your love. You will be known by your love. And in John 13, I am giving you a new command, and that is to love one another. And then also we know Paul writes about love in Romans 13. And then also in 1 Corinthians 13. A little extract out of the Message Bible. The Message Bible, 1 Corinthians 13. Just as a small extract. Paul writes here, I am bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love, love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head. Love doesn't force itself on others. Love isn't always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of sins of others doesn't revel when others grovel. Love doesn't uh, pleasure in the uh, flowering of truth. Sorry, love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Love puts up with anything. Love trusts God always. Love always looks for the best. Love never looks back and but keeps going on to the end. Love never dies. Isn't that wonderful? Love never dies. Let me explain. I've been thinking about this for a long time and with the previous episode we sort of also used kind of comparisons to a helicopter. So today the same thing. So if we can call redemption uh, the process of a flight school, a helicopter flight school, I thought about this a long, and a, a long time and I think it's a great illustration that love and grace works together in this redemption process. So then I said, with royalty comes responsibility. Now also this, if we can call it a, a redemption helicopter, this redemption helicopter has got its primary blades, the vertical main blades, and then it's got a rotor blade. Now, Helicopters cannot fly on grace blades alone, those main blades. It will turn and lose control. It will certainly turn and lose control. Can you see how this redemption helicopter vehicle uh, lose control? It needs the tail rotor for stabilization so it doesn't spin around. It needs a tail rotor for and tail blades for flying properly, flying properly, not spinning out of control. And that is love. We need love blades and grace blades to fly properly. 
to fly properly so we don't spin in control. Again, grace blades and love blades are twins. You see, we will miss, miss the point if we don't have purpose and destiny in life. And I've heard so many a destiny and purposeful goals, but the most simple goal should be for all born again Christians, the purpose to love. The purpose to love God, neighbor and self. That is surely the main purpose of life. And that is to love. And the word also says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So then an obedient heavenly love, a divine love, should be the purpose of love. And that should be the heavenly virtue for all born-again Christians. You see, for me, it's, it's, it's senseless to just uh, go on to this um, born-again grace bandwagon and, and there's no responsibility of a love being taught. You see, because for me, everything opposite of, of, of love is sin. And surely that is why when we get born again, we get a new conscience and that conscience convicts us of everything that's opposite to love. So then, for instance, a, a serial killer. That serial killer, if he changes heart, and receive Jesus Christ as his only Savior and Redeemer, when he becomes born again, surely he's not going to continue deliberately on this path of destruction, of killing, 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 killing people. That can't be. Then either he didn't repent remorsefully in the first place, so the motive and, and the, the repentance was false, and without remorse, it was no genuine rep repentance. Or then if a sinner or murderer or whatever, a criminal, uh, um, we all fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3 says, we all fall short of the glory of God. Therefore, we are all sinners initially. But then surely we get saved, we get born again, and then with royalty comes responsibility. So... Whatever your, your past situation, your uh, breaking the law or, or criminality or whatever past dark life we've had, surely the, we have this gratitude of becoming family of God, royalty to, in the Trinity, and we want to improve our lives. We want to mature. We, we want to become more pious or to glorify God in the end. If we love one another, the world sees that and God gets the glory. That should be our goal in purpose in life. Surely, yes, we cannot love perfect. We are always going to fall short of loving perfect. Only Jesus could love perfect. Jesus was the only sinless and perfect person ever. But he's the savior of the world and he preached love. We should become love disciples. So that the world can know that we belong, belong to the Lord Jesus Christ of love. The highest virtue, love, is what we must chase after. Otherwise, there is no purpose. So then, if we do fail to love, 1 John 1, 8, 9 says, We confess our sins and God is just and right to forgive us our sins. But if we say we do not have any sin, we make ourselves and a God a liar. So this is this purification, maturing process or responsibility, taking responsibility for our lives, makes this redemption process complete. And we will eventually get glorified bodies, heavenly bodies, and then we will become perfect in the virtue of love. But surely whilst we on this life uh, flight school, learning how to love, we should strive to love. Let me remind you, we should never uh, love to the point of getting abused or where it is destructive uh, in a relationship or anything else. In other words, making someone else uh, uh, destroying us or, or a hobby, or job, or career, then we make an idol of that. That, that then defeats 
the, the purpose of true love that God wants for us, uh, a life of love and joy. Um, but here's the thing. So without that back rotor, that back blade, that tail blade of love, this uh, helicopter redemption helicopter cannot fly on this these grace blades alone. The flight, the redemption flight, can only be successful if it has a, a tail rotor of love. And my friend, if you do not know the true Jesus Christ, the true shepherd of love, I don't care where you've been, God is right and just to forgive you your sins, but you have to remorsefully repent and say sorry for my past life. But Lord Jesus, I want to follow you all the rest, all the lives, all the rest of my life, all the days of my life. Please come into my heart. Goodbye.